Hey folks, Engineer775 here, continuing um, the spring development video. This will be part two of probably quite a few parts um, to this process. I wanted to show you the equipment that I'll be using outside of where the spring is, um, meaning I'm going to show it to you right here at my shop. And, um, and it's pretty neat, and it's uh, maintainable, which is what I really like about doing a, developing a spring this way. And so I'm going to show you three parts, water collecting, the actual spring box, how it's used, and then the holding tank can be just about anything um, to collect the water in. All right, what I'm going to show you now is the collection system. What we have here is the collection system. If you remember from part one, I showed you that I'd have to build a dam. Well, it's, a, it's going to be this flexible barrier wall. Everything's labeled on here. And uh, we have a back flush and overflow and the actual water outlet. This flexible dam can be cut to the contour of the land and then this will be covered once this is filled with gravel, covered with plastic. And you shouldn't see your collection system if you do it right. The only thing you're going to see is this backwash tube that you can actually add chlorine a bleach to uh, occasionally just to shock this area for if you ever had a problem. Usually you'd never do. And you can do that on this overflow tube. Okay, and so inside here you have uh, the tubes on the bottom is where the water will be collected. Again, you got holes in here, this PVC, and so the water is going to be collected in this area up against the dam and will go into your outlet tube. Um, if you have so much water, the water will run out of the overflow tube. So this is all one inch Schedule 40 PVC. And then we go to the next station. So in line here you have your collection, your spring box, and then a tank. And a tank, again, could be any size. The spring box is real neat. It is uh, just a molded spring box. Let me take the lid off here. It also has an overflow drain and an outlet. Obviously, it has an inlet, so the water will be coming in here, dropping down in. And it's got a molded bottom um, for a place for sediment to collect back in that center area there and then it has where the water, these are, um, you see the holes on this tube and that's where the water will actually be coming out. Now one of the neat things about this, you can adjust the overflow, you can adjust the flow of how much water you'll actually, your spring box will get from 380 gallons to 1520 gallons a day and you do that by adjusting your overflow pipe. You just basically, there's um, seven different arrangements of couplings and elbows and you can get seven different heights in here. But most people run it at full blast, get as much water as you can out of your spring and take it to your tank, which usually would have an overflow as well. So that's the spring box. So again, this will be um, taken care of very easy to maintain. You come in you, every six weeks maybe, you come you take the lid off, look inside. If there's sediment in there, you pull the drain tube, let this thing drain out, and then kind of flush it. Uh, what, you could stir, stir this up, get any sediment out, and then put your drain tube overflow back in, and put the lid back on, and you, your spring box is ready to go. You take your water from your spring box into a tank any size tank. I like tanks that have 16 inch uh, manhole covers on them because you can, uh, it's so much easier to clean them if you ever want to. You can add unions to your lines and disconnect and pressure wash them out. So, um, so you have good access here. You have good access uh, in your spring box. The collection system would be completely buried except for that backwash tube. And um, so if this is flowing, once it's flowing, you, the spring box will not freeze, okay, because that water is constantly moving. And in, I don't know about your area, but where I'm installing this is about 58 degrees. And uh, so anyway, it's moving water. It's well way above freezing. And then from the tank, we've got a large overflow here. And this is where I'll be piping on this first one I'm doing with this type system. I'll be running to uh, a ram pump. And if not a ram pump, you can hook um, any like sure flow pump, any DC pump, any pump for that matter, to the overflow and pump it to wherever you want. If you're fortunate to have all of this above your home, well then of course you'd be gravity feeding uh, to your house. 
and and then adjusting your pressure accordingly so that's it folks that's a uh, I wanted to show you all the components before they get buried in the ground so you understand what's happening collection maintainable spring box and then the water tank and you can run these you know the connections you can have it you can shorten it all up it can be right next to each other or it can be at large great distances apart elbowed 45 whatever you want to do it really doesn't matter as long as the water is flowing downhill and uh, if you have any questions far away but uh, I'm really excited about putting in um, one of these I've developed a string spring here on my property but not this way a lot of ways to do it I like this for uh, simplicity easily maintainable and no this isn't the old spring house that was used for refrigeration and um, and that's great though you could stick <laughs> gallon of glass jugs inside the spring box there's a little bit of room um, but if you wanted to do refrigeration you could obviously set up a after the spring box another place for a refrigerator um, using spring water I just like this because it's easy to capture any sediment that is in your water and so what you're getting after the spring box is pure spring water all right I think that's uh, plenty long enough. All right, thank you for watching.